This ship is not sinking, but then what is it doing? It is maneuvering from a horizontal to a vertical position. And besides, it is not technically a ship. But how is it possible? To understand, let's look at a 3D animation and explain in detail how this maneuver works. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. The structure we are talking about today is called Flip, or rather it was called, since it was then dismantled in 2023. But we will talk about its history shortly. The Flip was divided into two parts. The front part, which was the one we could mistake for the bow, that is, the nose of the ship, was the one that had the controls and cabins inside. It was about 17 meters long out of the total 108 meters, and was also the only part that remained vertically out of the water. The rest of the structure was an empty cylinder about 90 meters long, and its interior was in turn divided into several compartments that performed different functions. The secret of the maneuver was right here, in this cylindrical part. To put it simply, this cylinder was in turn divided into two sections, one narrower and one wider. In the widest part were the ballasts, one consisting of a concrete block and the others of tanks filled with air that contributed to the buoyancy of the structure in a horizontal position. At the time of the maneuver, air was released to let water in, increasing the weight of the structure at the rear of the platform. Why didn't it sink completely? The issue is very simple because the difference in weight made the lighter part, i.e. the bow, rise and the heavier part, i.e. the stern, sink. This obviously allowed the rotation to be triggered. To avoid complications during the change of trim, the water was introduced very slowly, otherwise the movement would have been too sudden, risking accidents. The maneuver in fact lasted about half an hour and the inclination changed gradually, almost imperceptibly, except in the last minute when the shift was a little more evident. Once upright, the flip could either float freely or use three anchors to a depth of 5,000 meters to stay attached to the seabed. Small aside, but what happened to the furniture, people, and equipment during the maneuver? Meanwhile, all the crew had to leave their cabins and stay on the outside decks. As far as furniture goes, this was one of the most bizarre features of this structure. In fact, refrigerators, stoves, pantries, and even toilets were mounted on pivots that allowed them to change orientation depending on whether they were vertical or horizontal. While for elements that were perhaps more difficult to rotate, such as sinks, two were mounted, one for the horizontal arrangement and one for the vertical one. And of course, in many rooms, there were also two doors to enter and exit depending on the position of the structure. Coming back to us, in the other cylindrical part, the narrower one, there were tanks full of compressed air that were used for the opposite maneuver, that is, to return to a horizontal position. In fact, air was introduced into the tanks full of water to let it out, and thus affect the resurfacing. Just to be clear, the immersion and surfacing mechanism is the same as that of submarines. Well, we understood how the maneuver worked and how this structure worked. But what is the use of assuming a vertical position? FLIP is an acronym that stands for Floating Instrument Platform and is also a play on words with the English term FLIP, which obviously means to flip over. As I was saying, it wasn't a real ship. More precisely, it was a scientific research platform. In fact, it had no engines and could not move autonomously. It had to be towed by another vessel. It was built in 1962, so in the midst of the Cold War, and its purpose was initially military. It was used to study the propagation of sounds in water and thus to improve the techniques for detecting Soviet submarines. For this reason, it was without engines, so that engine vibrations could not influence the detections. And these measurements were made with great precision, thanks to the vertical position. In fact, the vertical orientation was more functional than the horizontal one for two reasons. The first is that when the pinball machine is in the vertical position, its center of gravity is in the immersed part, and therefore this greatly increases the stability of the structure. If the center of gravity had been at the surface of the water or even higher, the flip would have been much more exposed to the movements of the waves. Furthermore, point two, in the upright position, the surface of the flip in contact with the water was much smaller than in a normal vessel, and this ensured better stability against the oscillations of the water. Obviously, I have simplified a lot, but these characteristics of the flip allowed it to collect very precise data that were not disturbed much by the oscillations of the waves. 
The effectiveness of the detections immediately made the scientists working there understand that FLIP had enormous potential for scientific research. In fact, despite belonging to the U.S. Navy, it was mainly used for studies in the fields of oceanography, meteorology, or climate. Consider that the structure could accommodate a crew of 11 people plus 5 scientists and could remain at sea for up to 30 days. This was possible thanks to supplies and a water tank obtained from a desalination plant. The FLIPS conformation was also very versatile because all the instrumentation needed for the surveys was external and was lowered into the water by the three mobile arms mounted on the upper part of the platform. All this made it very easy to both move and replace the individual instruments or they could also be attached to the base of the structure, on the side that submerged, to reach even greater depths. The instruments were mainly hydrophones, which are microphones used under the platform, but also used sonar or sensors for pressure or temperature. Oh, and we didn't mention it before, but between the cabins there were also two laboratories used to receive and process the collected data. Another important thing, the flip could also be easily towed to different locations to do studies in multiple locations. In short, a set of extremely functional features that have meant that the flip has been used for decades by many studios. Until it was dismantled after 390 correctly executed maneuvers. Thanks to the studies carried out by FLIP, for example, numerous atmospheric and oceanographic measurements have been made which are still fundamental in weather and climate forecasting. Think that FLIP was so important that it was also taken as an example for building offshore gas and oil extraction stations. Obviously, in this case, no maneuvers from horizontal to vertical. However, the physical principle on which these stations are based is the same. There are also some errors in the scientific field. Vertical pole buoys for scenographic studies are now very common, precisely because the vertical arrangement, as we were saying, allows for more precise detections. And if you think about it, FLIP itself is actually a sort of giant pull buoy. In the case of buoys, you don't even need a whole station and a team of scientists ad hoc. And you simply place the buoy to collect the data. And there's even a project called PolarPod that's very much inspired by the FLIP in its structure, and that's aimed at doing studies in Antarctica. Well guys, thanks for following me up to this point. Please, if you know other boats, other instruments a little bit particular with a strange shape, in short, Write it to me in the comments, and maybe we'll make a video doc. We'll see each other for a next video, always here on Geopop, Everyday Science.